In this video, I'm going to introduce the continuum assumption in fluid mechanics. Fluid as a Continuum by Ant Animations From the previous video, we learnt that fluids are defined as substances that deform continuously under shear force. Fluids are also composed of molecules constantly moving and colliding with one another. Between these molecules, there is open space called vacuum, which has no speed and density. How do we put our finger on the values of different fluid properties, such as speed and density, at a certain point in space and time in the fluid, if the molecules are constantly moving and colliding randomly? In other words, how do we know whether there will be vacuum or a molecule at our chosen point in space and time? We normally don't know, and we normally don't care. In most situations, we aren't interested in the position of individual molecules. It's incredibly difficult for us to track each and every single molecule in order to calculate fluid properties. Secondly, it brings up some weird results and I'll show you what I mean by this. Let's say we have a three-dimensional blob of fluid at time t seconds in a three-dimensional reference frame, and we would like to plot how density varies with x while keeping y and z constant at y0 and z0. So we'd like to find density along this line essentially, where y is equal to y0 and z is equal to z0 everywhere along it. You'd probably expect a plot like this, something that varies smoothly, right? Let's make this clearer. We will call x at this endpoint x1, so this is the coordinate at this point. Likewise, x at this endpoint shall be x2. x1 and x2 are here on this plot. You'd expect the gradient d rho over dx to vary continuously with x as well. You'd get something like this if you measured the density by considering a volume of molecules surrounding the point where you take your measurements. As a side note, we will use a cube to represent a volume of molecules in this video. So the average density of the volume surrounding this point would be this on the plot and so on. Instead, if we took our density measurements at a really small scale, let's say at molecular level, you'd actually get something crazy like this. You can see that as the point moves through a molecule, the density spikes and drops back to zero as the point moves through vacuum. This creates a rather erratic relationship when measuring at this scale where the derivative d rho over dx changes somewhat randomly too. We have only just monitored a small portion of the whole orange line here, roughly from this point to this point. So let's zoom out to see the entire orange line. Currently, our graph only plots density between those two black points. How might it look if we were to plot density between x1 and x2, using the same kind of scale to measure density, that really small scale that we used earlier, you'd still get this seemingly random and erratic relationship, now extended across x1 to x2. We would normally want to work with the first plot, and I'm sure you would too. The random position and motion of individual molecules it's difficult for us to monitor and control. So we ignore positions and movements at molecular level and normally look at the average or so-called macroscopic effect of many molecules when assessing fluid properties. We therefore normally model fluids by assuming they are a continuum. A continuum is a body whose variations in properties are so smooth that they can be differentiated. 
This continuum assumption involves us viewing fluids at a large enough scale that we can assume they are bodies of continuous mass, filling the space it occupies, rather than looking at a fluid as a load of discrete molecules. The viewing fluids at a large enough scale bit basically means using a volume to calculate fluid properties. I'll now show you how big your volume should be and how we apply the continuum assumption when finding a fluid's properties. Let's say we have the same three-dimensional blob of fluid at an arbitrary time t seconds. Point P is in the fluid, which has arbitrary coordinates x0, y0 and z0 in a three-dimensional reference frame. How would we calculate the density of the fluid at P? Well, density is mass per unit volume, but what mass and volumes do we use? Do we go super small and say that it is the mass of a molecule divided by the volume of a molecule? What if there isn't a molecule at point P at time t seconds? Do we go big and say that it is the mass of all the fluid divided by the total fluid volume? Surely that's inaccurate. So we briefly touched upon this. What we can do instead is select a volume. We'll call that dv and it'll surround and center on point P. By dividing the mass of this volume, dm, by its volume, dv, we can find the density of this volume, which we can use to represent the density at point P. Let's imagine we calculate the density centered at point P this way using different volumes. For example, let this red volume now have mass dm1 and volume dv1. We can call the estimated density at point P due to this red volume, row 1. This would be dm1 over dv1. Likewise, let's make a slightly larger volume that has mass dm2 and volume dv2, also centered at point P. The density at point P, estimated from this volume, row 2, would be dm2 over dv2. We can go on working out a value of density in the exact same way with different volumes centered on point P. If we then plotted the density calculated from each volume against dv of the volumes, it would look something like this. The density from the red volume, row 1, may be this from dv1, and the density from the orange volume Maybe this, for instance. From first observations, you can tell that we would likely obtain different values of density when using different volumes. Notice that the value of density becomes more erratic as dv goes below a certain value. We'll call this dv prime. This is because when dv becomes so small, that it only contains a small number of molecules, it becomes impossible to calculate a definite value for density as the molecules cross into the volume. For example, in this frame, the density of dv is basically that of a molecule. As the volume expands to larger than a molecule, the density drops as the volume is now not completely filled by the molecule but also has some vacuum in it. As we expand the volume further, other molecules cross into the volume, increasing density. This explains the erratic result of density when considering very small volumes. This is called microscopic uncertainty. Therefore, your chosen volume, dv, should be kept above the value of dv prime. Dv prime is a lower limit value that is about 10 to the minus 9 millimeters cubed for all liquids and gases at atmospheric pressure.
There is also somewhat of an upper limit of dV, called macroscopic uncertainty. When the volume we consider is too big, irrelevant external factors can affect our results of fluid properties. For instance, density changes in Earth's atmospheric pressure with altitude when we are only assessing the density of water in a puddle on the ground. The regions of microscopic and macroscopic uncertainty leave this somewhat acceptable green zone of dV for your volume in assessing density. As we've already established an acceptable minimum of dV prime for dV, we can make dV prime a target as we reduce dV. Mathematically, we write this as taking the limit of the volume as dV prime when calculating any fluid property. So the density, rho, at any point is best defined as dm over dV as dV tends towards dV prime. We've covered density. The same applies to other fluid properties, such as velocity and temperature at any point. I emphasize any point because our initially chosen point P is arbitrary, so we can use the same method of using a volume for any point in the fluid domain. The fluid property should also be calculated by considering an average value in the volume centered and surrounding the point, with volume within this green zone, but ideally dV prime. We can describe volumes at this size as infinitesimal, which in fluid mechanics we use to indicate anything much smaller than the fluid body itself, but still much larger than individual molecules. There is one caveat. The continuum assumption is valid under most conditions, however it isn't applicable when the mean free path of molecules becomes comparable to the size of the volume dV that you're using. The mean free path is the average distance travelled by a moving molecule between collisions. Essentially, this means the movement of individual molecules becomes significant at a bigger scale. An example of where this occurs is in rarefied gas flows. These are gases that have large average spacings between its molecules. This results in pressures that are significantly lower than standard atmospheric pressure. An example of such gases is air in the Earth's upper atmosphere. Instead, statistical mechanics is used in these situations. We will leave this for another video. Okay, let's summarize. We've learned that fluids consist of randomly moving and colliding molecules. Therefore, it's difficult for us to measure fluid properties such as density and speed at the molecular scale because the scene is constantly changing. You don't know whether there will be vacuum or a molecule at your chosen point in space and time. So, we make things more practical and easier for ourselves by using the continuum assumption. That is, in fluid mechanics, we view fluids at a large enough scale that we can assume they are bodies of continuous mass rather than discrete molecules. This large enough scale essentially means using volumes within the green zone of dV to calculate fluid properties, but it is best to use a volume of dV prime. Volumes allow us to calculate an average value for fluid properties within the volume, which can represent the fluid property at a point in the fluid if the volume is centered on that point. This way, we can assume fluids are bodies of continuous mass, rather than viewing them as a load of molecules, as we don't need to care about the movement of individual molecules. At this scale, we monitor the overall motion and changes of the fluid.
as if it's a continuous mass.